What's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we are going to talk about the hero's journey, also known as the monomyth. Particularly, we are answering a question from one of my subscribers named Natalie May, who has just watched the video I posted last week, What is the Ultimate Boon in the Hero's Journey? In that video, I basically gave a definition and explained some of the history behind it. But Natalie <clears throat> is now asking, she says, this is really helpful. Great video. I'm really interested in the boon part of the Hero's Journey. Can you talk a little bit more about the importance and purpose of bringing the elixir back home to the people and obviously because I'm doing a video my answer is yes so let's talk about it if you got if any of you who are watching right now are not familiar with what the boon is or haven't watched the last video go ahead and watch that first because it will it gives a, a pretty good I think definition and explanation of what it is but <clears throat> Essentially, the boon is so important for so many reasons, and it can really be, if done correctly, it can be, I don't want to say the backbone of the story, but it can, it can have a huge impact on the readers, which will cause the story to resonate with them. Now, it's not, not the only thing. A story is a sum of its, all of its parts. It's not just one thing. But the boon is one of those bigger things like your hero and your villain that can really make your story shine when done properly. And so let me explain in a couple different ways. First of all, just to give a little recap, the thing that makes a hero a hero is, is not that they go out and save people or they beat up bad guys. That's not what being a hero is about. That is the that is the kind of wide spread popular belief right now at the time. But in myth, in regards to the hero's journey, that's not what a hero is. That may be like a symptom of being a hero, but that is not what being a hero is. At the heart of it, what Joseph Campbell would say, at the core of being a hero is a person who goes from the ordinary world into the special world, achieves the boon, and then bring it, brings it back to the special world. Now, not only is that what makes a person a hero, well, let's stop right here. Some heroes, they don't bring it back to, to the ordinary world. And what is, what, why does that mean that they're not heroic? let's let's examine that a little bit so say say you're a hunter okay and I've, I've used this example before so pardon me if this is kind of redundant but in the in the old tribal days when we first started telling stories and stuff the first stories were about hunting animals and and the animals that you would encounter on the hunt or maybe you would go into another tribe but you go out into the, the wilderness, which is a special world, in order to <coughs> get to hunt, to get food for the winter, we'll say. You're the hunter. Your hero's journey is to go out, get that food, and bring it back to the people. Now, just imagine if you went out, you got a deer or a pheasant or a, a rabbit, whatever the case may be, maybe several, right? You, you and the hunting party. And instead of bringing that back to the tribe, so everybody, the women, the children, the elders, could eat that food and live to survive another winter, what if just you or just the hunting party ate it all and then left or stayed out there? Because maybe they found another tribe that they like better. I don't know. But is there anything heroic about that? And the answer is no. Absolutely not. That's the true defining factor 
of a hero <coughs> that separates them and really in a story let me focus here again okay really in a story designates who the hero is is it's the person who brings the elixir back so that brings up another good point in your story you can't have multiple heroes and it's hard to explain every story is going to be a little different but just imagine the hero that sets out on the journey goes out gets the boon but does not bring it back maybe it's because they want to stay in a special world they found another tribe that they like better and they would rather stay there or they go out into the special world and they die and this is actually in most cases the mentor if a, a great example of this great example is star wars right even though luke gets a call to adventure the true call to adventure comes to obi-wan obi-wan is a jedi knight he's not a jedi knight in training he is a jedi knight he is the one that Leia reaches out to for help. He is the hero that was meant for that journey. But the problem is, even Obi-Wan tells Luke, he says, I'm getting too old for this kind of thing. You know, join me, go to Alderaan, and I'll teach you the ways of the Force. So that was Luke's call, but the real hero for the journey was supposed to be Obi-Wan. And... Whether Luke went or not, Obi-Wan was going to go. The fact that Luke went is great for the story and also for Luke because then he becomes a hero. But along the way, as <coughs> Obi-Wan is not only playing the role of hero, he is also playing the role of mentor. He gets killed. He dies. And then he fully goes from role of hero to role of mentor. Because no longer can Obi-Wan carry out the mission. No longer can he bring the boon back to the ordinary world. That is left on the rest of the party, which it just so happens that in the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's really Luke is the one who fulfills all the, the responsibilities of the hero. So keep that in mind that the hero you start out with doesn't always have to be the one who brings the boon back. But the person who brings the boon back, the person who fulfills those needs of the tribe back in the ordinary world, they're, they're really the ones that are taking on that hero responsibility. So that also brings up... so. Earlier I said the boon is what separates the men from the boys in terms of not only heroes but stories because some stories don't even have a boon. Some stories, writers, and, and you've seen them all the time. It's the stories that like they're action-packed, they're fun, you enjoy them, but they kind of don't go anywhere. And after you've seen them, even though you got a laugh or you, it was exciting to watch, you kind of forget about them. And you move on until you see another one like that. And again, you enjoy it. It's like candy, right? You enjoy it for the few moments it's there, but you're not really left satisfied. So eventually you go back for more. Whereas a story with a boon that's properly done can transcend that, that momentary satisfa satisfaction and, sat and resonate with an audience for a long time, like a home-cooked meal would fill you up for hours and hours. And, and you may even, years later, think back to your grandmother's homemade pot roast or something like that and, and just reminisce on how good it was. That is what you want your story to do. And the way to do it, one of the keys is getting the boon right. So now I've built this all up. What am I talking about? How do you build the boon up? It, it's great. Okay, Josh, thanks for telling me that I that it needs to be the right boon, but how do I do that? The key here is that the boon should symbolically and thematically represent the theme, the lesson of your story. 
the boon should be the thing that <clears throat> really drives home your message okay and when you do that then then you've got a really good story one of the masters who I always go back to in all these videos and everything of recent time where you know it's just incredible how he did it is J.R.R. Tolkien with Lord of the Rings when you look at those stories the message is clear the message is power corrupts and total power corrupts totally okay multiple times throughout that series almost every character in that series is tested in some way and tempted in some way that has to do with power and whether you look at the hobbit or you look at lord of the rings both of those stories the boon represents and symbolizes that theme okay <clears throat> let me give you an example the one ring the one ring itself even in its name you get an idea of the purpose and you get a glimpse into the theme the one ring to rule them all it's all about power it's all about corruption and greed to have everything to yourself okay and so when when we look at the one ring the whole story revolves around these characters either trying to destroy it or trying to get it that's what it boils down to and those who try to get it for power end up being the antagonists or bad guys and those who try to destroy it end up being the good guys because ultimately Tolkien's I would say looking at, at, at Tolkien's works his his message is ultimate power corrupts so it has to be shared with everyone and you can't have it all in one place one weapon one 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 people one person right so if you look at the Arkenstone it's the same thing the Arkenstone from the Hobbit you have Bilbo and the band of dwarves and get off they go out to to find the Arkenstone and then when you get there one of the big tests for Thorin Oakenshield that he kind of fails in a lot of ways is the Arkenstone it drives him mad just like it drove his grandfather mad and so there you see very clearly two boons that represent the theme symbolically thematically the boon in and of itself is almost a character but the thing is right that information that the boon represents is the information not only that the theme represents but ultimately that the writer believes society has lost track of or or perhaps technology or something has evolved currently that the writer believes we need to take a new look at it from a different angle okay in one of my favorite movies that maybe not everybody knows or has seen Transformers and I'm not talking about the recent Transformers not Michael Bay I'm talking about like the 1984 maybe 82 Transformers cartoon it's what it's a really great story it's a great movie too but beyond the the cool aspects when you were a kid it resonates even to this day because the the story was told very well it very much follows the hero's journey the boon there was the matrix the matrix of leadership and the theme was basically that you don't have to be an old wise warrior or hero in order to take on a leadership role and help your people and so that's the whole story of hot rod right 
Optimus dies. He passes on the Matrix to... Uh, oh, why can't I think of his name? He passes on the Matrix to basically a, a, a war-seasoned hero of the Autobots. And everybody assumes that's the right person to Ultra Magnus. He gives it to Ultra Magnus, right? And everybody assumes that Ultra Magnus is the, the right predecessor to Optimus Prime. But what we see throughout the story is that Hot Rod, this younger kid who doesn't have a lot of experience, is actually the one who leads the Autobots to not only defeat Galvatron, but also to defeat Unicron, which is like the World Destroyer, right? And the theme there was that even as a young person, no matter what your age is, you can take on the mantle of leadership. It's not just, it's not just out there, blocked, only reserved for those who have been tested in all these different ways before. And that's not to say that young people don't have something to learn from old people. In that, in that, in that very same story, you have Hot Rod being taught by so many people. Optimus, um, Cup, Ultra Magnus, and, and various others throughout the, the entire uh, narrative, right? But ultimately, he was the one who led the Autobots to success. He was the one who had to step up and take on that responsibility because no one else was there. So the here so again, I think I said it earlier in, in this video, you can't just look at the boon as its own thing. You have to look at the boon as it relates to the story, particularly the theme, but also the hero and the villain, right? Because the boon is the lesson you want to teach. The hero is coming at it from one angle, trying to obtain it, right? And the hero may, may think a lot of times the good stories are where the hero has a misconception and the boon is the thing that teaches him. For example, Hot Rod didn't think that he was supposed to be the leader yet, right? He didn't have that confidence in him, but the boon taught him that he could be that person to defeat Galvatron and Unicron. In the same thing with the, the Lord of the Rings is that, you know, the, the power and corruption, it teaches several of the characters that, that, that they, that power can, can lead them down a dark path. Frodo in particular, Frodo, although he was the ring bearer, he was corrupted ultimately. And it taught him a lesson that even the most unlikely of people, the most gentle person with no ulterior motive, like a hobbit, can be corrupted. That was why some people say, well, you know, why would J.R.R. Tolkien have Frodo at the end fight to keep the ring? It's because the point is anybody can be corrupted. That is the point. And so the hero and the, the whole team, pretty much, the whole Fellowship of the Ring and everybody, assumed that if anybody can take this ring and not be corrupted by it, it's going to be this very simple hobbit from Hobbiton. And ultimately, one of the things that, that J.R. Tolkien wants to show is that that's not true. Okay, so I was saying the hero comes at the boon from one angle. And sometimes it's a, it's a misconception for the hero as well. But the villain also comes at it from an, almost the opposite angle of the hero. And a lot of times, the, the thing that makes the hero and the villain so important is that they're polar opposites, right? And like I said before, the villain, just like we have a misconception of what the hero is in a popular culture nowadays, we also have a misconception of what the villain or the antagonist is in popular culture. A lot of villains today are these evil guys that are just out to, to kill and, and do bad things. 
when really at the heart of it, an antagonist is someone who's just there to block. And antagonists can be used to really, really good degree, almost like the boon in a sense, to, to reveal something about the hero and to show them and give them insight into what what is not the right thing to do. So if, if we go back to the hunters, because this is a really basic example that hits the point home, you have... You have the hero hunter who is going out into the wilderness in order to obtain the boon, which is the deer, for his tribe. Well, then you have the villain hunter who is also going out to obtain the deer. Also, for his tribe. Who is the hero and who is the villain? That's a hard one. Because both of them, in their own right, are heroes. Because they're both going out to do the same thing. Or maybe one is going out to get the boon in order to feed their tribe, while the other one is going out to get the boon in order to clothe their tribe. I don't know. But the point is, a true villain should, should their goals, it's not like, their goal isn't to kill the hero. It isn't to stop, it's, their goal is, they're trying to be a hero in their own right. To do the right thing as they see fit. And so, for example, one, okay, I'm trying to relate this with a story that I've been working on to really, I hope this hits home, right? The uh, one example is you have the villain who wants to keep the door shut because they know that there are bad guys, real bad guys, on the other side of the door that are meant to hurt everybody. But you have the hero who goes to get the key and try to unlock the door because he knows that if if everybody stays in the room, they're all going to die. They're all going to suffocate, right? So the hero believes, has faith and hope that if they get out of the room, they can fight the bad guys and, and eventually win. Whereas the villain or the antagonist who's trying to keep the door shut, their, their belief is that they're saving people, but it's coming from a, a wrong center because it's coming from a center of fear rather than hope, right? The hero believes that they can overcome the challenges that will come in the future, whereas the villain in this scenario is, is afraid that the future will bring worse terrors than the current one. So the, basically the villain is choosing everybody die here in this safe zone, in this safe box where we can't be touched. Whereas the hero is saying, no, we open the door and we fight what's out there. We take on what challenges are out there. So in, in, that, in that very simple example there, what you see is, both of them have their own reasons to either to want the key. One wants the key to open the door, the other wants the key to keep it locked. And both of them are trying to save lives. But one is coming from one point of view and one is coming from the other. And it's you as the writer who has to decide which point of view is right. Which point of view are you trying to show is correct, right? And so that's where you get down into deep beliefs. And, and that's where part of being a writer is, this is a part of being a writer that's so powerful. If you tell the right story and the theme that's tied into the boon that is gone after by both the hero and the villain is depicted appropriately, you can have a really powerful story that just like grandma's pot roast will resonate with people years and years down the road. And the reason, now here's the other key. Okay, so we talked about how, how do we make the boom powerful? How, how, do, how do you do that? Well, you tie into it a lesson, a theme, but here's the key, right? This is, this is another thing that sometimes writers miss the mark on. 
this can't be some lesson that was taught in the past. For example, the boy who cried wolf, right? That's a lesson we all know. Goldilocks, a lesson we all know. Sometimes can be applied still today, but the thing is, it's a lesson that's been taught. The one, the true lesson, the true themes that are crushing it right now are themes that are relevant today. Themes that, like, when the audience leaves, they don't know what the writer has just done. But... If, it's, if it was done properly, not only did he entertain them and give them a good story, but he taught them a lesson that they can take into the real world and use it now. And ultimately, that is what your boon is. That elixir, that sword, that whatever it is that they bring back, the key, the map, that is the power. That is the lesson that they can bring into their own lives and use every day. So, for example, we already discussed Lord of the Rings, the, the power and corruption thing. That, uh, particularly during the time that J.R.R. Tolkien was writing his stories, was a major issue that, that countries had to deal with. So, that was something that was very applicable to the time and the people. If you look at Star Wars, the, one of the main themes there is don't, don't rely on the system. Don't rely on a machine. Rely on your intuition. Rely on yourself. Depend on yourself. Believe in yourself, right? And one of the main reasons why Star Wars has been so endearing over the years is because that lesson applies to, to several generations. And I'm sure it will like continue down the road. The same thing, the story I mentioned earlier, the Transformers story about the mantle of leadership. That story will continue to resonate with young people. If an older person were to see it, I'm not saying they wouldn't like it. They probably would, but it's not going to resonate as much as if, if you see it as a young adult, probably 18, anywhere between 4 and 18, seriously, that story is going to resonate with you for probably the rest of your life because it taught you at, at the appropriate age, at an age where it was really tactile, like where you could use it every day, that you don't have to be an adult to be a leader. You don't have to be an adult to be the one who takes care of the problem, right? So the, the point there is the boon... It symbolically and thematically represents the story in such a way that subconsciously the audience or the readers will take that lesson that they learn and apply it to their lives. And you got to remember, unlike writers, most people when they watch movies or do entertainment, read a book, see a story, whatever the case may be, they don't think this deeply into it. This is this is us as writers in analyzing stories, analyzing the monomyth, analyzing the hero's journey, analyzing psychology, because that's where a lot of this uh, ties in with in particular. It, 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 psychology is that little hole that allows us to peer into the insides of the hero's journey and understand it, right? And when you when you understand those things storytelling becomes the 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 secrets are unleashed you know for me i always wanted to be a storyteller but i didn't like i knew i could tell there was a difference between a good story and a bad story and I couldn't figure out like what was it what was that thing and it wasn't until I started to delve deeper and deeper into this hero's journey and the psychology behind it and you see the psychology behind the boon behind the hero and the villain that you start to see what really makes a story that's good good if you look at all of the the blockbusters that have lasted the test of time or that that continually receive success it's it's no secret they're following i don't want to say it's not the same formula but they're hitting on the same psychological notes 
that are known to resonate with an audience and that that that's the key so I guess the last thing I'm going to touch on here before I go is your question also talks about the elixir and, and I've talked about the boon and why you bring it back and all this that, that other stuff but you know sometimes it's an elixir sometimes it's a sword sometimes it's a map sometimes it depends on the physical representation of your boon depends on the story that you're trying to tell and the lesson but that's that's where I would go the very first question you should ask I mean some people start with a premise or a character and that's good but at some point if you're really serious about your story the really the first critical question you have to ask is what point am I trying to get across what is that lesson what is that thing that I'm trying to share with the rest of the world that I think will help them along their real hero's journey in the real world? And from there, start to develop your boon, start to develop your main character, and start to develop your antagonist. Because when those three are in line with each other, in terms of they, they work out, everything else in the story is going to fall together. Everything else in the story will make a lot more sense because you're coming from a really strong backbone. Those three elements are, are really like a powerful, that's where the story's truly gonna evolve around. Those, those three elements, right? The, the hero, the boon, and the, the antagonist, the villain. And so, should it be an elixir? Should it be a sword? Should it be a map? It depends that that is maybe I'll do a whole nother thing on 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 this topic but for now suffice to say it really that's up to the writer that's up to the storyteller to decide what makes the most sense you you, you see so many boons though they you know they can be a piece of jewelry they can be a rock they can be a gem they can be a key they can be a map they can be a shield it, it, it really it's symbolically what is that thing going to trigger in in the audience on a subconscious level that they'll identify immediately with what that's supposed to mean right i think i think that's really what it is and there's there's no right or wrong answer this is where this is here's the thing a lot of people will criticize writers and particularly writers who use the hero's journey for being like oh it's a formula it's formulaic but that's not true the the thing is it's a guide it's kind of like it's kind of like a road map right or no not even like a road map it's like it's like street lights okay without them there would be utter chaos and there would be car crashes and traffic would never be able to flow you would never be able to get to where you need to go, right? What the hero's journey does is similar to a stoplight where it guides you as to when you can go somewhere and when you can't. What is the right direction you can go and what isn't? The road itself is also this, is a similar metaphor here. <clears throat> as a writer, you may be able to write really good prose, and tell really good jokes and make really good action scenes but if it all doesn't come together to give some sort of message then you may get a laugh but you're not gonna get you're not gonna get an audience that was you know affected by your story in a good way so a, instead of having the chaos, what the what the writer's journey is really doing is it's it's providing a, like safe places for you to go and guide you in the direction that you need to go. But from there, just like the roads, you may stop at a stop sign and you have the option to go left or right. You have the option to ride a bike or a car or a truck. That's the same thing with your boom. Your boon can be a key. Your boon can be a fleece. Your boon can be a shield. It can be boots. It can be 
uh, something written on a note somewhere. It doesn't matter. That's up to you. As long as you're staying within the, the, con the safe confines, avoiding chaos, that's the part of writing where that's on the writer. And every story is going to be different. Every story is going to be unique. Every story will be artistic because the writer chose that, not the monomyth, not some formulaic thing. That's up to you. So, okay, I've given you 36, probably going to be 37 or 38 minutes by the time I'm done, of an answer to this question. We've touched a lot on the boon. We're going to talk more about the boon, but I hope this helps answer any questions you guys have. But if it didn't, or maybe it, it sprung out more questions, drop a comment in the, in the comment section below, and, and I'll try to address it. But until next time, I hope you guys are doing well, and take it easy.